So hello again to my podcast, Art and Cross with Nina K. My, my name is Nina Kramer. And I'm sitting here in a wonderful studio at Art Cross Festival in Machtrenk in Austria. But I have a very special guest who was born in the US and lives in Brussels, Europe, but now is stationed in Finland. His name is Dr. Tim Mills, and uh, he's a grand grandfather of Art Cross, so to speak. I'm looking forward to his insights and his empowering visionaries. So welcome all creative people, you as an artist, uh, that you are listening. Thank you. And first of all, I want to introduce or show you a little bit what Jim Mills and his ministry does. We are in central southern Europe and here for our life camp that we're running here. I'm very pleased to have with us about 17 artists who are working in the marketplace, but are, uh, they're craftspeople, but they have a heart for young people. And so we're delighted that they're here and they're helping the kids discover their value and also their particular gifting. We have many times seen where uh, young people uh, are uh, discover things about themselves that they never knew. Uh, giftings that were innate or latent in them and so these artists are like craftsmen to help draw out that beauty that's in them. Of course our agenda is that they know God, His thoughts over their lives and they know their value and so this week is given to hard work in all the workshops as well as special time to the artists. They're all very approachable people. They fear God, they love people. I'm honored to have them working by our side and uh, we're very excited about this week and we get to do this all over Europe. And so we're, we're very grateful for the fruit that God's given and the good things yet to come. Oh, wow, Jim, I'm so impressed all over again and again. Um, I mean, the last time we saw each other, it was that you visited us here in Machtrenk and we had some good steak or schnitzel or I don't remember what you had. Um, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was so ha nice to have you and Anne here with us and encouraging us again and again and again. Um, so let's start with introducing you because you are a musician with a crazy miracle life, feeling called to be a missionary in Europe. So how come and what, what do I or our audience listening imagine a musician missionary to be like? Yeah, uh, maybe I'll use the word musicianary just for to confuse us all. Basically, you know, I am, come from the Jesus People movement in the early 70s. There's a movie out in the USA right now called Jesus Revolution. And we were pretty, we were washed up into the shores of the kingdom of heaven through that particular movement. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, my life uh, turned to, I said, Lord, what do you want to do with my life? And then uh, we had, I'd already been to Europe. I was actually in Innsbruck in 1970. That dates me okay. Uh, I was an exchange student in college, and uh, but I wasn't really walking with Jesus at that point. But uh, but during that visit, you know, I thought, well, okay, I've been there, done that. But I was sort of surprised later when I came back and my life totally got turned around when I was 21 years old. Uh, and the Lord's whispered in my heart, you're gonna be in the German speaking world, particularly, and in all of Europe. And so I said, well, Okay, but how do I get there? I don't speak a word of German. I said, oh, well, yes, kann ich Deutsch sprechen, but I won't today. I know, I know, you are fluent. <laughs> yeah, it's a joy for me, to be quite honest. I really I have a great joy over the German peoples and the German language. And anyway, so then we were, we were, we actually were introduced to Europe through a great ministry that we're no longer a part of, but we are the same DNA, and that's Youth with a Mission, Youth with a Mission. And that was the first nine years from 1976 to 1985. And through those years, you know, our whole understanding of working in culture and reaching into the culture, I called it in reach, not only outreach for the gospel, but in reach, reaching into our world, uh, became very uh, important to me. And so then it just began to unfold. I mean, in, in Youth with a Mission, uh, Lauren Cunningham was a great influence in my life. He is the founder and leader of that work. And uh, he had a really strong message on uh, that we need to be active as Christians and present in every sphere of culture. And that's then one of the areas we felt was missing 
that most the, the, the biggest absence in culture was in the area of the arts. And we said, Lord, this has got to change. And and then providentially, the Lord kept us meeting mainly dancers, poets, writers, culinary artists, sculptors. And uh, we our whole passion then was to help them find their way since they be, they met Jesus. They, they were asking me questions like, what do I do now? I said, well, you keep going. Don't stop. And if the Lord doesn't tell you to leave your occupation, do not leave because he needs you there. Because you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the kingdom. And uh, you need to stay there. Anyway, so that's how this all came about. I mean, as far as my music is concerned, I'll just say briefly, you know, since I met, even before I met the Lord, I was, music was a big part of my life. I loved music. And, but I, I didn't excel in it, really, in the beginning. It was only when God touched me deeply with the Holy Spirit that uh, a well inside me turned into song. And, uh, and I began to do a lot of music. And then, then I've been honored and privileged, Anne and I, together. We have written many, many songs that are sung in German. And, you know, when the, they open up the old German hymn books now, they say, they see the, the composer, Jim Mills. They go, Wer ist denn das? Who is that? He's not German to be sure, and, uh, but it's an honor for me as a little American Memphis boy to have been transplanted in European culture, and what I learned through that brought me to where I am today. So that just sort of is a brief introduction anyway, uh, a bit about my history. Yeah, I got to know you through Bring the Arts to Life, where you supported and mentored the founders there, this ministry of, you know, uh, what we do now as Art Cross to to. Um, have workshops, have seminars to equip people, support people in their giftings and arts, but also uh, humanly or like like a pastor. And I think that you are like like such a mentor. You have artists on your heart, and you you are like coach, and you are all about what I remember serving each other and and yeah. not only being on stage and 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 celebrating the arts and celebrating the music, but but really be supportive and and gift to each other. So I thank you for being such a mentor and coach and also networker. So maybe you tell a little bit about Creative Arts Europe, why Europe yeah. and, and, and these networkings. Yeah, actually, and it, it's, uh, as I look back and think about our history, we, from the early 80s, actually, we began to do uh, seminars and workshops. And I was trying to we had a burden to awaken the church at large uh, on the gift of creativity just generally. And then also we felt like there was a real uh, lack of understanding about what do we do with these gifts that God's given us? Do we only use them in the context of evangelism or in the church or, or in our worship section and worship life? And I said, no, no, for me, life, all of life was worship actually. And so we needed to expand and realize that, we're called to live in this life, actually. And so from the beginning, we began to do these workshops. We did it in Austria. We did in 1979, 1980, 1981 in Switzerland and in Berlin. We went to a large church there and did a creative and workshop. Bulgaria, and worship, Bulgaria, but, the, la the latest stop, Bulgaria and Finland today, to what, yeah, where we, you are? We, we, we've been, We've done, I, I think I counted, we've done over 100 different types or 150 different uh, types of gatherings specifically that went a week or three weeks long where we focused on uh, knowing God's mind about the arts and about ourselves and about his assignment in our lives. And so our passion was, you know, really about loving people. I mean, I, for me, my first interest is that we come to know who we are and why we exist and for whom we exist. And then through that beauty, then to live out that life in a practical way. And so, you know, when I, when I, I've taught like in scores of schools and I would hold my Bible in my hands and I would be talking about the ways of God and the values of the kingdom. And, but then I turned to the kids and I say, listen, if you think serving God is only standing here with an open Bible, then you don't understand what service is. I said, it's not about that. It's not about being a full-time missionary. It's about being a full-time Christian. <laughs> and it's, it's about living servanthood, you know? And so we began to in, really, that was ingrained in us through our experience with youth on the mission. So we began to turn and ingrain that into the very soil of artists and that was our passion we feel like the arts world was an untouched world as far as um the 
a lot of values that were so necessary uh, yeah. to to really support the beauty of what God had given us. Yeah, I think, I mean, when I think of you, this is the quote, I think this is, it's, it's not about full-time missionary, it's being a full-time Christian and really serving each other yeah. and supporting each other. And it's about relationships. I think when I think of you, it's about relationships. And that's what I, what I cherish. And that's the DNA. I think that's, that's quite close in, in our different ministries to have this DNA of reaching out to people and in reaching, as you say, uh, because I see that many believing artists, they are quite lost sheep or some, sometimes they're lost sheep. Sometimes it's their own fault because they're quite sensitive or um, they feel like misunderstood by church. But you are a bridge builder between church and pastors and, and, and mentors and coaches and the artistic world. And I, I think that's what they need. When I, when I was first at Christian Artists uh, three yeah. years ago and I said, I'm an arts pastor, uh, they all said, what? This is, this is real? Is it existing? This, this is true. Well, we need someone who is at our back and who, who, uh, who encourages us and, and who supports us. And that's what you do. Uh, so thank you for, for all that. But there is a second DNA I want to talk about uh, with you. Um, this is your heart and vision for society and uh, to, to really reach out and be a Christian on the marketplace. So a full-time Christian, not only to each other and supporting each other, in, like in a, in a ghetto or just be among ourselves, but to really be out there. As we saw in the clip, as we could see that you said, uh, these, these are 17 artists out on the marketplace. So tell us, um, tell us your heart or what you see, what we can learn as a Christian world, what we can learn as artists. So now you have frozen, Jim. Uh, that's the modern reality of our yeah. technical era, you know. Jim, now you, we uh, can see you a lot better, and we we can see uh, just as a warm up, we can see this wonderful picture in, in your back. So I'm just wondering, yes. who is that? Yeah, this man is Matti Bisenen. He's a a dear friend of ours that you know we've had contact. He's now he's now probably retired, but he was a theologian and a very significant person. Are we still on? Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, and Matti and Impu, his wife. They were like pastors and lovers of young people. In the 60s, there was a revival here in, in this small village and in, in all of Finland and a, and a huge stream of missionaries went out all over the world. And so this is the mission that we're connected with up here, this church movement uh, within the Lutheran church that we do our art seminar. So that's Matthew, he's a dear man, uh, yeah, amazing. That's a, good, that's a good key back to this reaching out to the world as you said, yeah. missionaries in the 60s, uh, what your heart is and my, my, uh, my other question about being and living on the marketplace. Okay. Essentially, what we began to say to artists was, you know, God wants you to learn to live on the stage of life. And so it wasn't only the stages that we were trying to achieve, but learning to live on the stage of life and practicing your art there. And so we began to see the great need to help artists find their stage they were called to live on, not to only reach for higher stages, but just live on their stage. We felt like God would bring them to new places if they just were faithful to love and serve people in whatever stage they found themselves on. So I had so many young artists who I, that, that they had this big dream of being on Broadway or they wouldn't want it on the West End or to reach the heights. And I said, you know, what are the heights? I said, the heights for Jesus was at the well with the Samaritan woman. This is the, uh, the unseen stage, the very important stage of life that you just love people and you penetrate cultures that way. And so we began to meet, you know, bring the artists together. When we did these seminars, my heart was as much for the artists as it was the participants because we wanted them to enjoy the connection that you would receive from there and also hear the message of serve him, serve him serve him find out what he's asking of you and just be there don't just live for what's not there yet don't live there for the opportunity but serve where you are god will be responsible for to bring you to all the stages you need to come to and then he will develop the stage 
For instance, I'll, I'll give you one quick example. This sounds funny, but uh, my son was going to a German kindergarten and uh, I went to the kindergarten teacher this years ago. I had in my home at that time, I had a New York dancer who danced in the ballet professionally. I had an actor from Houston who had worked professionally as an actor. And they had two tap dance dancers who had been trained in tap dance. And so I went to the, the kindergarten teacher. I said, look, um, we have a bunch of friends here, and but I'm here. And if you ever want me to come play the guitar for the kids in my son's class, I'll come. And she said, oh, that'd be wonderful. But she never called me till the end of the year when they had a huge festival in the village. And she said, would you come and bring all your friends and do an entire show for us? <laughs> and so we did. And so I had the New York dancer doing the Nutcracker, a piece from the Nutcracker, the, my artist friend doing pieces he had created. We learned a song and learned a soft shoe and I took tap dance for a while. So we just sort of gave and I, we poured out and just love the people. And I think, you know, this is what's missing a lot. We think that in order to reach people, we have to explain everything. I think if we love people, we're already making a loud noise for the heart of God and we're investing. And in the marketplace, this is what's missing often. You know, it's just being there. I call it presence evangelism. Just the fact that we are an aroma of life and we need to be there and be contagious and be yeah, contagious with our, our life and our joy of living and our love of people. And we're not perfect people, God knows. Uh, I, I tell all the artists when we come together, we didn't choose you because you're perfect, but because you're willing. And I want you, I want to work with you and I want you to love these kids and I want these kids to be just like you. And that would scare them every time whenever we do these camps. I said, because you're in the real world. You're loving people. You're growing. Talking yes, about talking, here. yeah. Talking about. I interrupt you. Uh, sorry, but talking about these toddlers. This this touches me uh, because I mean this is the most critical audience on the one hand and on the other hand. I mean just playing as as you said as a ballet dancer from from New York, just playing for toddlers. I mean that's the stage of life uh, you are talking about. So this is this is a great um, wisdom. This is great wisdom, Jim. And you were talking to to artists here. May you maybe you you can close uh, this interview by speaking also to the church or to pastors and people out there who are Christians but who are afraid of artists or who think why would a musician just play concerts and not talk about Jesus or why would a painter not paint the cross all the time and you know all the, these expectations of believing artists and what Christian art means. Maybe you could you could also um, you have a wisdom a word of wisdom for for those people. Well, you know, I, I was years ago. I began to think, how do we glorify God in the arts? How do we do that? And so I said, it's no different than how you glorify God in your life. You love your wife. You love your children. You're you're a neighbor. You care for people. You're transparent. You're vulnerable. You're open. You're uh, you're you're generous. And all the attributes of the kingdom of God are, are, are growing like a garden in your life on that stage of life. And I, uh, when, I, when I think of artists, it's true. Sometimes when the pastor gets a hold of an artist, he goes, oh, boy, finally I got somebody who can impress someone through their art. And I go, no, 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 no. The artists just need a home. And, and they don't make them perform on Sunday to make their art holy. Just let them know that they're valuable for God like every other member of the church. And if, they, if they're doing something in the marketplace, pray for them. Tell the congregation about what's going on. Uh, you know, and I, I, I think the biggest need is for pastors to begin to give a sense of authorization for every sphere, a sense of serving God in every sphere, including the arts, and, uh, and not become so utilitarian. The point is, You know, it's imp we do want to use our arts. If I know every artist that has come to Jesus, the first thing we want to do is we want to give. We want to give, and that's the ethos of an artist after the heart of God. We want to give, and we want to share the light that we've experienced. But sometimes we just need to let people have a taste, and 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 sort of be an aroma through our art. And so pastors need to get behind the artists. They need to pray for them. They need to encourage them. And, and I guess the last thing I, I want to say, if it's okay, Nina, is I'd like to just read a, a quote from a great man of God named Elton Trueblood, which uh, I think Go this ahead. is just Go real ahead. practical. Yeah. He said, God's artist, he said, God's artist, and, and this isn't only for the pastors, this is for the artists themselves. 
God's artists are never true to themselves when they're living for themselves or for their art. Artists who are chiefly concerned with saving their life, the life of their art, will lose it. God's artists must always be engaged in finding new ways to transcend themselves. Our main responsibility is outside of our walls. Our world of art needs to be moving in a redemptive redemption of the common life. That's why we call it true art and redemptive art. And I, and I finally close this. Art is everywhere all around us. But redemptive art from a Christian point of view is art that doesn't exist for itself. But it goes outside the borders of only seeking affirmation. It seeks to be involved in the transformation of the life, reaching the marginalized, the unlovely, the unseen, the people that we see every day. It seeks to go beyond our borders of self-expression and be involved in loving people for the glory of God. So again, the final thing is, if you want to glorify God, how do you do it in the arts? It's no different than the rest of life. You love God, you love people, you serve, you move on the stage of life. And I guess that sums it up greatly for me. So thank you to encourage us to be full-time Christians and to love God and Absolutely. to love each other no matter what. And uh, I click in as uh, to having this vision of, of reaching out to the spheres and supporting, as you said, pray for people out there in the marketplace and support and build relationships Absolutely. and support those who, who are trendsetters, who, who have, a, have an imprint on society. So thank you for being yeah. there, Tim. And thank you for sharing your, all your wisdom and experience and uh, all my love back to Finland and uh, whatever you do you. and keep doing. Um, so thank you for your time and uh, for this interview. It, Nina, it's been a joy. May the Lord bless you guys abundantly there and pour out his grace as you celebrate each other and the gifts he's given and bless all the teachers and, and bless you for all the work and labor of love you carried on and all those who are involved with you. It's just a joy to be here with you. And we're still with you, even though we're not physically there. I know. And we receive that. Thank you. You're welcome. So this was Dr. Jim Mills. It was, I mean, it was live, it was podcast, it was uh, the technique you, you've seen. I mean, th this is modern world. Uh, still, it's so good to have, to have had him uh, from Finland because Bring Darts to Life, Art Cross in the beginning uh, had him live here, present. So we are missing him. And I encourage you to, to look after Creative Arts Europe, Arts Plus, and Dr. Jim Mills. And maybe you even find his thesis on empowering uh, visionaries. So thank you for listening and thank you for keep thinking about this. And I would be glad to hear from you at some point. Or maybe you just email at info at artcross.at uh, to share your thoughts or to, um, yeah, as a pastor, as an artist or creative uh, person, to ask your questions. Thank you for listening. Bye.